guys, welcome to or back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Julia and today I'm giving you my 23 healthy habits for 2023. These are things that in my experience are worth making a habit for like a variety of reasons. And if you want to see them in action, I have a whole playlist of my health and fitness vlogs and I'll link it below. The last tip is definitely the most important, so you're gonna to want to stick around for that. But for now, let's get into the video. Okay, we all know a good day starts with a good morning, right? Wrong. It actually starts with the night before. So my first tip that I developed is I like to plan my day the night before. For me, I write it on my little iPad mini or you can write it in a journal, make a checklist. This is just really good to set your intentions, make sure you get everything done, and then you're not overwhelmed thinking about everything you have to do and you know you're gonna get it done rather than having this vague idea of what you have to do. Another thing that sets you up for a good morning is getting the right amount of sleep. Everybody's gonna tell you to get enough sleep and I am very guilty of sacrificing sleep for other things so I need to do that too but we all know that. What I think we all don't know is like for me when I get too much sleep I feel super groggy and unproductive the rest of the day and my appetite is all out of whack and I think a lot of people on break or on weekends do get too much sleep and you're not actually making up for the sleep that you lose. You might be getting out of that like sleep deficit but you can't store up sleep so what I try to do is establish a wake up time that I try to wake up every morning and on the weekends obviously I'll sleep in a little more but if I wake up around the same time each day then I find that my body gets used to it a lot easier and it gets easier and easier the more I wake up at that time so lately it's been waking up at five so I can get everything done before the school day and if I get to bed late I'll try to sleep in later obviously but I found that it gets easier and easier the more I do it I have a whole winter morning routine coming out soon so stay tuned for that speaking of winter in the winter at least for us it's really dark in the mornings and that makes it so hard to get up so my tips for getting up easier are one set your alarm across the room. I heard someone else say you should set it in the bathroom or wherever your first step is for the day, but I live with my family and I don't want to wake them up, so I just set it across the room. But even that for me, like, I got so used to it that I would literally get up, walk across the room, and go back to bed while the sun just came out. I would walk across the room and then go back to bed and go snooze for like three minutes and then get up again. So I've had to start setting my alarms a minute apart each and then I'll get up, walk across the room, see that I only have like 40 seconds left for snoozing. So I decide, oh, it's not worth it. So then my other tip with that is to just stay standing and like stretch out a bit and then you'll be like, okay, I think I'm awake. Another tip is start with something easy when you first get up. This helps you not feel overwhelmed when you get up and for me, if I know I'm gonna go and make breakfast right away and work out, then I'm just like, oh, I just want to stay in bed. I don't have the energy for that. So I always start with washing my face and listening to my devotionals because that's something easy, that's refreshing, and I know I love it. I look forward to it. Speaking of devotionals, I really want to encourage you to find devos that you look forward to. Even if you're not a Christian, there's so many things you can take away from a Christian devotional, I promise. My favorites are on the Bible app or some podcasts that I listen to. I think I've mentioned it like a million times, but I love the woe that Good podcast by Sadie Robertson and the That's Joy Pat. <laughs> the That's Joy podcast by CC Calvinero. Also, Bought and Beloved by Kirby is a Boss is so good. I'll usually listen to those as I'm getting ready for the day, whether I'm washing my face or putting on makeup, or even if I'm going for a walk or a run. The next thing is decide whether you're gonna prepare breakfast the night before or in the morning. If you're on the go, busy, 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 definitely prep the night before so you don't skip breakfast. For me, breakfast is the time when I get the most protein. I'm a vegetarian, so I don't eat meat, and breakfast I get lots of protein powders and Greek yogurt in. So so I like getting a lot of protein in the morning so then I feel full the rest of the day too. So that's a good idea if you're feeling busy in the morning is to prepare it the night before, whether it's like overnight oats or whatever. For me, if I need time before I'm about to work up or if I need time to build up an appetite in the morning, if it's like too early, because I don't want to have breakfast at 5.30, sometimes I purposely don't prepare it the night before and I take that time to wake up a little more in the mornings. My next tip is to make a breakfast that you love. I'll do a whole video on my breakfast because I love breakfast. It's my favorite meal of the day. But for me, I love like a really sweet, like desserty, high protein breakfast in the morning. For you, just find something that makes you feel good and something that tastes good. Don't skip that for the sake of health. Like you have to enjoy it. As I really thought the sun would go away, it's so bright. Okay, I'm so sorry if this lighting sucks, but I couldn't stand it. My next tip on cold mornings is to get a hot drink. I know I probably don't have to tell a lot of you to drink your coffee, but for me, I love tea and I never put in the effort to actually drink it. So if I just put in the effort to boil a little water and pour it, I find that it like warms me up on the inside. When I'm cold, I just like shut down. I can't do anything. So when I drink a hot drink, it actually makes me really productive. I'm like, okay, I feel good. I'm ready to get going. You know, no matter how cold it is outside, I'm warm inside. Also, black tea is a little bit of caffeine 
caffeine, so it's just a little natural pep in my step. Okay, this next one is one of my biggest tips. It's find what makes you feel your best and put in the work to do it. Let me explain. For example, like for me, movement in the mornings, whether that's weight training, going for a run, whatever it is, that just makes me feel so good the rest of the day. It helps me wake up a little better, makes me feel productive. I'm just like, I have a steady energy. And honestly, when I don't work out in the mornings before school, sometimes I'll actually fall asleep in class. I'll be so tired. You'd think that getting the extra sleep would help? No, no, no. Waking up early actually helps. But it could be movement, it could be walks or stretching, getting your work done early even. And the putting in the work to do it is normally getting up early. Because getting up early is hard. But if you know for yourself that it's worth it, it helps you push yourself. All right, this is really important. You need to find influencers that motivate you. Social media, at least for me, has a huge effect on my mindset. Because Instagram or TikTok or whatever is going to see what you're looking at and send you more of that because they want your eyes on the screen. Some people that I love and would recommend for fitness content, I would recommend Natasha Ocean, first of all. Love her so much. Taylor Woods, Kelty O'Connor, Amelie Desai. She just motivates me so much. Oh, and I also found Brindley Joyner. I love her content too. She lives in Hawaii, so she just got like the dream life. Okay, the sun kind of hid behind the clouds. We're good now. <laughs> For faith content, I love Ashley Hetherington, Julia Poe, Ayat Sia, Sadie Rob Huff, and Kirby is a boss. They all really inspire me with my faith, whether it's habits of how to grow my faith, the sun. Guys, I love the sunshine, but this is too bright. The other option is just don't use socials. I know it's hard to say because everybody seems to use them and you don't want to miss out, you want to stay connected. So personally, I use them, plus like I want to grow my YouTube channel. But if you don't find that they're helpful for you or you never find the right content or you just get like sucked in and then you waste your time on it, whatever it is, you don't have to use them. And then you're not being influenced by anything and you can talk to God about your habits. I don't think social media is necessary. I just think it's a really helpful tool. Okay, totally different note, but I'd encourage you to drink a lot of water consistently. I know everyone's gonna tell you to drink a lot of water, but I think a lot of people will start and they'll drink their 64 ounces and then they'll be like, that is way too much. I can't do that anymore. Guys, it gets so much easier. Even the having to pee, you get used to it. I promise, stick with it. You will feel so much better. I can tell when I don't drink enough water. Like, I will blow. My skin will get bad. My lips will get really dry. And big water bottles, like I've had these 64 ounce chug jugs, they're amazing if you don't lose them. I've lost three of them already. So if you can find a bag that they'll fit in, then that's perfect because you won't lose it. Or if you're just more responsible, then definitely get one. Okay, next step as you're getting ready for the day is to wear something that you're confident in. This can be something that's really comfortable, that you feel like is flattering on you, or just that you really like the look of. It makes you feel like yourself. This helps you like walk more confidently and you'll want to go out more. You'll want to show off your outfit and you'll just feel really cute. So why not? When you're planning out your day, make sure you budget extra time for yourself. I always give myself extra time in case I sleep in, in case I'm slower on something. And then if I have that extra time before I'm about to go, then I can leave five minutes early. I like to always give myself five to ten minutes to leave early because I used to be always late to things. Then I got a job last year and I realized that wasn't really gonna work. Then you're not rushed, you have time to cue some music for the drive, you can warm up your car if it's cold. It's just nice. You're not all stressed out. These next few are gonna be habits that you're kind of gonna have to work to develop. One of them is listening to your body. Your body tries to communicate with you and it took me so long to learn how to listen to it, but I think I'm finally starting to understand what makes me feel my best and what my body's trying to say to me. God created our bodies to talk to us like they're perfectly designed. So always try to eat when you're hungry. Don't wait till you're like starving. Don't push it off. Just go get a snack. You'll be more productive anyways. And then when you're starving, you'll probably eat anything. And I've had to learn how my body responds to certain foods. And I always try to choose the ones that make me feel my best. I think I said that like a million times, but when I'm like starving, I'll just reach for whatever's easy. Next thing that you'll have to train yourself on is acknowledging your emotions. Personally, I would love to just go, 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 but somehow my emotions will always like catch up with me. Normally it's in the transitions. I'll be like driving somewhere. I'll be like, oh, I'm so tired. <laughs> or something will just creep in and I'll just have like this heavy feeling. I'm like, what just came in and ruined my day? I have no idea. But when I acknowledge those bad feelings, I can think about it, process and be like, oh yeah, it's cause like this happened. I feel bad about that. Or I'm really not looking forward to this. I'm just dreading it. Or maybe it's just not sunny out. For me, the weather makes a huge difference on my mood and it's so annoying. 
going. I know I'm complaining about the sun, but I genuinely need the sun. Okay, speaking of the weather, make sure you go outside at some point during the day, especially if there's sunshine. You gotta get that vitamin D. It's always like a solid pick-me-up, give you a little bit of energy. I don't know, sunshine just makes me smile, unless it's shining right in my eyes. Okay, another thing for scheduling your day is create pockets of peace. I mentioned this in my productivity conversation, but for me, this means scheduled breaks within my day. And sometimes I just wanna push through and get as much done as I can when I'm planning out. I just wanna grind it out. I'm like, oh, I can do it easy. But then I remind myself when I used to do these HIIT workouts. And during these HIIT workouts, I would take the rest times and I would exercise on them because I was like, I just wanna get the most efficient workout done. I wanna do better than this person that's leading the workout. And then I watched Natasha Ocean's videos and she just encouraged me with like HIIT workouts to take the rest times so you're able to push as hard as you can on the work times and then you'll actually get more out of it. And your estimated energy expenditure, there's another name for it. It's basically how much energy you feel like you're putting out versus how much you are putting out. It'll be closer to it. Whereas if you're not taking your rest times, then you're going to feel a lot more exhausted faster and actually not be doing as high quality of work. So I like to compare that to life too. And they can be productive breaks. Like for example, I'll put in cleaning my room to give my eyes a break from computer work. Or I'll put an easy project in between two hard projects that I'm working on. Okay, this is a really important one. And it's investing in the people that you love. Be intentional about making time for them because you know how much it'll fill your soul. And if you don't have people that you love, try to put yourself out there and make some community. And then related to that is invest in people that need you. I'm gonna give you some tough love real quick. Life is not all about us and our own circumstances. And I'm talking to myself here because personally, I'm very selfish with my time. I like to use it all towards what makes me productive, makes me feel good, blah, blah, blah. And all of that is good because it keeps you from pouring from an empty cup. But at the same time, when people need you, it's worth sacrificing your time for them. They're worth more than your convenience. But like I said, you can't pour from an empty cup. So one thing that I've been really trying to focus on is gratitude. This can look like journaling or even saying it out loud. Every single time I hit a green light and I don't have to break, I thank God because I hate wasting my gas by breaking. <laughs> and saying it out loud helps me remember it better rather than just thinking it. This has been a lot, so remember to give yourself grace. I slip into this all or nothing thinking a lot, but I just want to remind you that you don't have to do all these healthy habits right now or any other resolutions or goals that you have. You have the entire year, so relax. It's going to be a long process if you want it to be something that you can sustain for a long time, not just a quick fix. This applies to so many things I can't even explain. <laughs> so as I'm sitting here editing, I'm realizing that there are not, in fact, 23 tips. There are 25 tips. So I don't know if I counted wrong or if I just like added more, but you get two bonus tips. <laughs> when you need a little boost, visualize the end goal. Why are you doing these things? Is it because you want to be a more joyful person? You want to reach your fitness goals? You want to make a habit of journaling? Whatever it is, just remember why you're doing it and visualize yourself where you want to be. Then that'll remind you, hey, this is why I'm working towards this. This is why it's worth it. Lastly, the most important tip of this whole thing is know that you can't do it all in your own strength. Guys, knowing that you can rely on God brings so much relief. He's so much stronger than we'll ever be and just knowing that he has a plan for our lives that we can't mess up is the most encouraging thing in the world he knows the plans he has for you there's a whole verse about it and if you guys ever want to talk about that i would love to talk about it you can reach out to my dms i have my instagram in the description and this is something i'd always love to talk about all right thank you guys so much for watching i really really hope this inspired you to go out and get your goals and resolutions now is the best time for a reset and i'm cheering you on from here go have a great new year and remember jesus loves you. Bye.